Hello friends, this is Uma Thipat Mishra and this is a case of 36 year old lady with uh, history of irregular uterine bleeding with uh, hysteroscopic guided biopsy showing the query endometrial adenocarcinoma. MRI was done uh, which showed uh, normal myometrium and uh, uh, there was no foci of uh, uh, irregular foci on endometry and normal lymph node status. So uh, decision taken for uh, total laparoscopic hysterectomy with uh, bilateral salpingo operectomy. As this case is uh, previous uh, uh, two caesarean case, so uh, bladder uh, adhesions were there. There were tense blad bladder adhesions. Uh, uh, were present and uh, so right now we are uh, freeing posterior peritoneum we are cutting posterior part of the broad ligament so that uh, we will cut uterosacral and this step will minimize the chances of thermal injury to ureter as uh, we cut the uterosacral, the ureter goes laterally. So, cutting uterosacral is vital step in laparoscopic hysterectomy. There was little ergonomic difficulty in this case as this patient is uh, obese, very obese and the weight is around 120 kg. So there was little difficulty as far as the port placement was concerned and uh, there was little difficulty during operative uh, time as uh, ergonomics becomes little difficult in such cases. So now we we are coagulating and cutting in fundibular pelvic ligament. So before cutting and coagulating the in fundibular pelvic ligament, we should always visualize ureter. Sometimes ureter uh, is medialized to IP ligament. So always always look for the site of ureter. You can easily look for the ureter. Now. After coagulating and cutting IP ligament, we again uh, will open posterior peritoneum and will cut uterosacral. So opening posterior peritoneum and millimeter by millimeter we are cutting, cutting it. There was little venous bleeding which uh, I have taken care of. So you can see dense bladder adhesion. The bladder is uh, densely adhered to the isthmus part. In such cases, it is very vital to uh, find out the proper surgical pain, otherwise, it may lead to thermal damage to the bladder, and which can later on cause. So millimeter by millimeter we are cutting the uterovesical fold. I have shifted uh, my energy source from trailer to harmonic as there are less chances of thermal damage when we use uh, ultrasound energy source. 
So the most vital step in such cases is to visualize the uterine artery. Initially I tried to localize the uterine artery just to get the proper planes because in case of previous cesarean and previous scar if you want to find out the proper plane of dissection just go above the uterine artery because uh, bladder never crosses uterine artery as far as uh, embryology is concerned so initially i'm trying to find out the plane but it is it's being very difficult to get proper planes in such cases if you are not getting the plane you can just cut the fibrous part where it is getting attached to the uterus so i'm cutting this fibrous part millimeter by millimeter till now i haven't got the proper plane of dissection in such cases uh, you should always lift whole bladder rather than lifting only hold of peritoneum when you immediately when you lift the bladder you get the idea of uh, proper plane and uh, proper dissection so this is proper plane of dissection slowly slowly opening the jaw forceps this is uh, non tooth forceps which is called ellis forceps you can see bladder is densely adhered to the lower segment so i'm just cutting uh you will fold millimeter by millimeter and this give me the idea of proper plane again i have lifted all fibrous part the jaw of my forceps and uh, dissecting the lower area millimeter by millimeter so once i cut this area i will get the plane One more difficulty in obese patients which we encounter usually is uh, the length of our instrument which is usually standard and the 36 cm instruments it uh, falls short sometime as in obese patients when pneumoperitoneum is created the height of abdomen abdominal girth becomes more so the length becomes less uh, in very obese patients, we should always have one set of long instrument, which is generally used in bariatric surgeries also. But this case was done with standard uh, uh, length of instruments. So this is just a tag of tissue. Slowly, slowly teasing this area so as to get the proper plane. As this area is very close to uterine artery, we can't cut without looking for uh, vessel. Now this is actually bladder pillar area.
so this area has uh, become cleared and the bladder filler area has gone down now this is the main area which i'm concerned more because i have to dissect it properly again lifting this fibrosed area as soon as we will cut this fibrosed area we will get a area which is free of adhesions now again lifting this fibrosed area so as i could cut this fibrosed area and i would get the plane in such cases don't try to do blunt dissection do sharp dissection as far as possible because blunt dissection one thing it will uh, lead to bleeding second thing it will spoil your area of surgery so it will become more difficult to operate so do sharp dissection as far as possible now see whole bladder going down this part which i was talking about is free of adhesions and now it is going down easily now my job has become little easier as i know now that i have to dissect this part and i have to push this down so you should be very patient while doing such dissections and be as gentle as possible and try to lift whole bladder rather than lifting only uv fold because once you lift whole bladder Uh, our CO2 also helps in dissection. Second thing, it helps us to get proper plane of dissection. So again, we have reached till bladder pillar area. As soon as we cut the bladder pillar, uterine artery will be below that. So we have to always dissect bladder pillar area properly, keeping uterine artery in the mind. Slowly, slowly and gently pushing bladder down of the cervix. again this area there are bladder adhesions so we have to push this also be very gentle and precise in such cases because once surgical field is gone it becomes very difficult to get a clear field to operate again cutting right side round ligament and the to be fold My instrument is reaching that area with difficulty as I already said the length of instrument becomes fall short in obese patients
so there is little difficulty in taking instruments to Now we can see uterine artery just below this ladder pillar area. This uh, pipe like structure which you can see immediately below this area is uterine artery. Now we have this bladder pillar down. We will further push remaining fibers which are left. My assistant is taking grab of bladder as a bladder pillar of this area has to be pushed down further. Before coagulating uterine artery, we have to push bladder pillar so as to avoid bladder injury. Now millimeter by millimeter, we are further pushing bladder pillar down. Mama. As there was little bleeding in this area, so I'm trying to coagulate that bleeder with shearer. As we all know, harmonic is a good receptor, but poor hemostatic ability. Further pushing little bladder fiber which are left so as to make bladder more safe.
now you can see torsus you friend vessel and uh, we can quadrilate now usually the standard practice says we should always correlate one centimeter of uh, uterine length for proper hemostasis we coagulate the vessel till bubbles stop coming as the stoppage of uh, bubble shows uh, proper coagulation which shows proper desiccation of the area uterine artery is sufficiently coagulated we further push uh, bladder fill area a little down Now I have breached this vaginal area. So by haptic feedback we can find out whether this area is cervix or vagina because we can clearly delineate the cervical and vaginal area by haptic feedback. As the bulge of cervix is not there, the vagina becomes a little flat and you can see uh, vessels running down there. So you can make out this is vagina area. It is always very important to sit little further. So when you start taking suture bites your bladder will be sufficiently down and will not come on the way Just give short burst of current over there to avoid thermal damage.
Now matted knot ligament is being cut. Now again posterior area is visualized and uh, you can see the stump of uterine vessel. We are trying to open the this wall. Is being and cut. Further coagulating and first to your proper hemostasis and it will not bleed further. After cutting uterine vessel, we further uh, push bladder pillar a little down. Once we keep on cutting this area, we have opened the vault. So once we open the vault posteriorly, it is uh, a safe method and uh, we can avoid thermal damage to the bladder and ureter also. So always try to open the posterior vault first. And once we get the idea of uh, our vault, we can open it interiorly also. After opening vault on the left side, now I am coagulating uterine on opposite side by inserting shearer from contralateral foot so as to keep shearer at the angle of 90 degree with uterine artery length. As it's very important to coagulate uterine artery at the angle of 90 degree. or proper hemostasis. Now I have started cutting back and rod ligament. Millimeter by millimeter cutting it and uterus is being released. Once you start uh, uh, cutting uh, vault Without the help of vaginal tube, you get a haptic feedback so as to where exactly your vault is going to get open and you can separate uterus without help of vaginal tube. Now layer by layer dissection. Uh, 
meat dress is getting plain and now all specimen got separated. We have removed the uterus with cervix with bilateral adnexa and now coagulate and now suturing the vault with uh, number one round body polyclap. It is very important to incorporate uterus actors in your vault stitch so as to avoid further wall prolapse and it is very important uh, as well to incorporate the vaginal area the whole length of vaginal area should come in the suture which gives most support to the vagina Interrupted sutures of uh, vitreal are enough for closure of vault. We need not to take continuous suture, and it's also a personal choice of a surgeon how he or she is comfortable with that. Some surgeons prefer two needle holder while doing surgery. I prefer one needle holder and, and uh, one meridian for the surgery. So it's basically a personal choice. One more uh, interrupted suture and then we are done. Post surgery bladder was uh, instilled with 200 ml of methylene blue dye and uh, bladder integrity was checked and uh, confirmed.
bilateral ureters were checked for peristalsis. One important point to keep in mind that you should always take the hold of needle as soon as you take it out through the tissue so as to save your time because once the hold of needle is gone it takes little time to uh, hold it with needle holder and then again reposition it so keep one thing in habit always take a grab of needle Thank you so much for watching the video and uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for further academic videos.